On today's Taste Texas, Chef Garth and I are preparing the tastiest and easiest herb chicken with roasted potatoes and pickled onions. We're tossing those with a visit to Generation Farms. So there's no magic machine that's just shearing these off. It's all, all done by hand. And the chef's five minute meal has a Latin flair. So pull up a chair and join us at the table. And I'm Garth Blackburn. We're so happy to have you here today. We will have a wonderful in-studio audience and we appreciate you viewing as well. We're going to make some awesome chicken. I love the word awesome, as you can tell. <laughs> hey, if you're describing my food, I'm always good with awesome. We're going to tile it something different and it's chicken. So how are we going to do this? What is it? This is a pounded out chicken. We're going to serve it with some oven roasted potatoes. We're going to toss that with some Generation Farms arugula. I have to take a little visit there. Yes. And then that's going to be served with this herb sauce I think you'll really love and as many Texas ingredients as we can possibly do. So. In a nutshell, it's called pounded out chicken. You can't forget that one. All <laughs> my, right. My so menu title queen. Okay, so we're going to cut these potatoes up. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead and half those for me? Is, are you wanted that no. way like you did those no, potatoes? No, no, especially <laughs> oh. not. Yeah, I we're not doing the. The, uh, all the way across in the potato cutting. These potatoes are from Texas as well. Really? Where? Uh, those are actually from Farmersville, Texas. Well, they're just and as pretty as they could be. if I cook potatoes <laughs> in a casserole dish, that, does that officially mean I'm, I've made a casserole? Nope. That so if y'all didn't count. see the show, Amy gave me for my birthday a casserole dish, primarily because I always told her that chefs don't make casseroles. So, Which is a shame. So this is kind of a casserole because it has potatoes in it and we're going to cook it in the oven. Listen, we've come a long way in just a few weeks. He's already using a crock pot and now he's using a casserole dish. So we're making progress, right? There'll be right? no cream of mushroom <laughs> soup in this one, though. <laughs> That's okay. We're going we're gonna to teach you slowly. There we go. And I'm impressed you have all four five digits still attached, all four. <laughs> four in the thumb. <laughs> I was born with five guards. <laughs> now everybody's going to be looking from this show forward. Does she really only have four fingers? She's got five. <laughs> so I put some Texas olive oil on there. Yeah. Some freshly cracked black pepper. <laughs> Just going to toss that around. This is going to go into a 400 degree oven uh -huh. for about 40 minutes. And then we're going to take it out just briefly, add some herbs and some lemon zest to it and put it back in for about five minutes to finish. So you're roasting in this casserole dish. That's it's, all right. That's, that's all right. We're gonna casserole. We're gonna, I'm using my present. We're gonna give it that. I don't think casserole is a word, is it? It is a word. Is it? Awesome. Officially now, you can use it. It's casserole. Like Fibrousy. <laughs> it just means it's kind of casserole-ish. Because oh, that's a word. <laughs> yep. All right. So we're gonna pound out the chicken. And since you titled it, I'll let you do the work. Pound you, it out, chicken. If you don't have a mallet, like a meat mallet, then you could use a heavy skillet or a hammer. I guess a hammer would work too. <laughs> Everyone's got a hammer at home. What better use for a Le Creuset saute pan than to Seriously? pan out your chicken? Have at it. Oh, wow. So uh, too bad I'm not feeling angry about anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I beg to differ. <laughs> I'm not even giving it all I got. You want to see <laughs> No, no. I want to keep our countertops. Oh, am I going to hurt the countertops? No. Okay. And actually, I do encourage you guys. Once, once you know, people can hear, <laughs> I do encourage you guys to do this on a wooden cutting board because if not, if you miss the chicken even slightly, that is going to crack your countertop. So instead, always do it on a wooden, wooden cutting board. You're going to save your countertops that way. There we go. Unless Amy has that, you might still lose By the way, a I do work section. out, so I've got some muscle in there. You got some muscle in there. Yeah. We're going to do a quick marinade. These are uh, Meyer lemons. And they're actually from my tree. They're green because they're not quite ripe yet, but they still taste delicious. And once you smell, you smell the zest. Mm -hmm. Do they? I mean, taste, can you smell it from do there? Do they taste like a lime right now? No, they taste like a lemon. They're not quite as sweet as they will be later, but they're already sweeter than what you're getting at the grocery store. Interesting. These are yours Just off your smell tree. That. Uh huh. Impressive. And you can find those right now in grocery stores. Um, they'll usually be green unless they're imported from South America. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll put that in. I'm going to add a little bit of. Uh, Texas mustard from Fredericksburg Farms. Okay. Then I want to add the juice of the lemon. Why don't you cut that in half for me? Mm -hmm. I'm going to work this in a little 
little bit of salt. There's some seeds in here, does that a matter? Bit of pepper. It actually it does. So if you want to squeeze that either upside down or squeeze so it. So no seeds. Because right. we're going to turn this into a sauce. Oh, I see. Okay, so no seeds. This is a nice juicy lemon too. And that's what's great. The Meyer lemons have a really thin skin. Mm -hmm. And so you'll find that you get a lot more juice out of them. But and what if you're if buying you them at the grocery store, they might be more expensive, but it's well worth it. But what if you can't find the Meyer lemon like right now? Because aren't they typically a summer? No, actually they're winter. So they'll typically ripen November, December-ish. Uh, in the summer, you'll find them out of South America typically, but if you can't find it, you could certainly substitute a regular lemon instead. Okay. Not as sweet, that's for sure, but it'll work. Okay, so that's just gonna marinate. There's a lot of acidity. I only need about five to 10 minutes. That's why this is so great for a weeknight meal. It's not something you really need to plan ahead for. Okay. We're just gonna do a quick sear while those potatoes are roasting and then make a simple sauce. Perfect, all right, we'll work. Got to let this marinate just a little bit and we'll be right back with more. Stay with us. about this show is that we get to take you to some really great places and some farms and meet some wonderful owners that actually grow and raise the food that you put on your table. So in this episode, we're going to show you a wonderful farm that we went to where they raise um, edible flowers and lots herbs of fresh and, herbs. Yeah, Ethan has done a fantastic job of bringing freshness to your plate. That's right. And it's called Generation Farms. Take a look. We're here at Generation Farms to learn about herbs and edible flowers, you know, things that Garth likes to use. Love the freshness. That's right. Let's go check it out. <laughs> We grow really a full line of culinary herbs, from basil to mint, rosemary, lemongrass, sage, chives, on and on. So, and edible flowers we do too. I think I've had some of those. Yeah. I think I ate one or two on the show before. Generally, we'll seed out arugula. Arugula we do from seed. You see the baby stuff in the stores, you can grab a leaf and taste it. Um, this is fairly new. I think he's probably, this house will be ready to harvest Monday. Mm. That was so good. Yeah. They'll come through and just kind of cut it with scissors and cut, cut it evenly across the top when we have a lot. But on our basil, we'll selectively cut it. Be because we have so much of this and we don't sell as much, the basil will come in and selectively cut certain shoots. And so then it airs out and it gets more light and it branches out. So there's no magic machine that's just shearing yeah. these off. It's all, all done by hand, wow. all done by hand, yeah. And then on the older plants, like uh, rosemary stuff, it, the stems get all this, they get woody as opposed to real. And so the oil content is just not nearly the same as when it's fresh. It'll be like so sticky, like you just used hand cream. Kind of like our skin. It's all dried out and wrinkly when we don't, as we get older. I'm not going there. <laughs> so you take your hand and you run it like that over the plant, grab it. Oh yeah, for sure. A little sticky. A little sticky, it's all the oil. But this is the young, healthy, vibrant, no wrinkles. That, that, is, that is correct. See, it's all new growth. You don't see any woody growth except right. way down there. Basically the houses, uh, they're cold frames. We have enough sunlight during the year here in Texas. Uh, they stay pretty warm except for a week or two of ice storms and whatnot. So this is an older house. When, when we finish cutting on it, we'll cut. We'll generally replace it every year to two years. The plants, we'll harvest on it. And then eventually we'll take it out, pop off the doors, the tractor will go and till it. We'll re-bed it up and plant something else. And I love seeing where these herbs are grown and I still smell it on my hands. So fresh. Yeah, and, and the edible flowers really are pretty good. They make your plate look pretty, but they're pretty tasty too. So they're edible. That's cool, <laughs> right? All right, so let's get on with this chicken. Yeah, we're gonna sear Pounded the chicken. Pounded out chicken. Pounded out chicken. Mm -hmm. So why don't you put a little bit of the grapeseed oil in there? Okay. And I'm loving this yellow pan. I know this is a, a girl thing, but I love yellow pans. I'm gonna stand back. <laughs> I'm <laughs> happy with any all color. Over my shirt. Wow, you got that really high, is that okay? Because we just want to get a quick sear, we're going to finish cooking it in the oven. Mm -hmm. And I only let this marinate for about five or 10 minutes. Because mm -hmm. I've got a <laughs> lot of lemon juice in there. <laughs> Looks like a little protector. Yes. I've got a lot of lemon juice in there, and uh -huh. so if we let it marinate for too long, it's going to start to get kind of mushy. Yes. We're going to lose some of the, uh, the texture that we want to keep in that chicken. Okay, let me ask you a question. We talked about the marinade, and um, 
my thoughts are I would like to do something like this and put it in a Ziploc bag to marinate overnight or maybe put it in the fridge before I go to work. Then come home and actually do this. Can I do that without marinade? Just don't put the lemon juice in. Okay. So if you're going to leave it in for several hours, mm -hmm. go ahead and use the lemon zest. Go ahead and use the mustard. Mm -hmm. Just don't put the lemon juice in until a few minutes before you're ready to see it. And is that because the lemon breaks it down too much? It does. It'll okay. make it, the outside will start to get really mushy. Okay. All right. So fairly nice quick sear. Uh-huh. And now, I've said this about the pork before. In, in a real restaurant, I would have to discard this, but I don't want to waste all that deliciousness. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it up to a boil. That'll kill anything that was in it, and we can still use this for our sauce. Really? Really. That's interesting, because so, I would have thought I had to throw it away. Yeah, but you've got raw chicken. I mean, you're cooking the chicken, so why not go ahead and cook the sauce? Okay. So put that mustard down. Uh-huh. And then... Fancy chef where deglaze the pan, it means good excuse to open up a bottle of wine. <laughs> all we need to add is about a half a cup. That is going to remove all those delicious little burnt it's, bits. I call those the crunchies. The crunchies. Yeah, you got to get the crunchies off. It's going to bring the crunchies off of there, add some texture, add some flavor. Mm -hmm. And once that's reduced down, uh -huh. we're going to add two tablespoons of some Texas butter. Nice. And then some of those fresh herbs from Ethan over there at Generation Farm. So we're reducing that down now. Let's get the butter in there. You should go ahead and whisk you wanna, that. Yeah. Well, actually, first we want to cook the alcohol out. So, Why? <laughs> Why do you want to do that? We save the rest for us. <laughs> okay, so, and do you want to get the crunchies off the bottom? <laughs> the crunchies, yeah, work those crunchies off the bottom. Well, you know what I mean. It's that stuff that kind of sticks to the bottom that tastes really good once flavor. you get them. That's the flavor. That's the best part. Don't want to ever discard that goodness. No so way. So, it's, it's been reduced by half. Yeah. I'm now going to turn the heat down to low. Uh-huh. Put in two tablespoons of butter. Here comes the good stuff. For you, I think you actually prefer like three or four, right? That's, thank you. See, the more the merrier. More butter is good. And just make sure you turn the heat off. That'll keep the butter from separating out from the rest of the liquid. This is great. I'm going to keep stirring this up. And uh, we're, we're going to fire the chicken in the oven and yeah. take a look at the potatoes. Perfect. Okay, well, we're going to take one more break. And I'm going to keep stirring this. Y'all just stay tuned. We're going to be right back. So moving on with this pounded out chicken, lots of great herbs, potatoes in the oven. Now what? Yeah, we're going to do some garnish items. That's going to be this, this red onion. Uh -huh. So this is some Texas red onion. It's from Jacksonville, I believe, Texas. Mm -hmm. We're going to put some red wine vinegar on that. We're going to mm -hmm. crank up the heat. And this is a quick pickled onion. Yeah, you, pickling usually takes quite a bit of time, right. you know, mason jars, whatnot. Right, right. By taking up to heat, that's going to, to break down the onion, so it's going to soften some. All right. And what I really like, especially around fall, is to add some additional flavor to it. So I've got a cinnamon stick, mm -hmm. some star anise, uh, a little bit of allspice, and then some, some pepper, mm -hmm. peppercorns, and a little bit of cardamom, my sous chef's favorite favorite spice. Once that comes up to a boil, just turn the heat off, let it sit for about an hour, and now you've got some quick pickled onions. And I'm imagining your house is going to smell really good, too, with a little potpourri That's going on the stove top. Potpourri, some red wine vinegar <laughs> and onions. Yeah, absolutely. Favorite so, smells of fall. And you can make this several weeks ahead of time. It'll actually hold in your refrigerator for a long period of time. Okay. okay? That's a great idea. And so to go with that, we're going to do some of the fresh herbs for our sauce. Right. So we've got some parsley, mm -hmm. some thyme, and you remember what Ethan taught us about how to check for rosemary? Right. So he said just rub your hand over the top of it, and if you've got this kind of a little bit of an oil feel left into your hand, it's fresh, it's young, it's healthy, it doesn't have wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Wow. You're going to be smelling like rosemary all day. Yes, it's a perfume, too. <laughs> But yeah, that's a really cool tip. So why don't you tear some of those off? That's why I put you in charge. After I rubbed it all over sticky. my face. <laughs> oh, Yo, so healthy. That, that's the taste of love right there. <laughs> what do you want me to do? What, so what? pick one up and then slide oh. it right back down. Just like that. See, perfect. Uh huh. That's yeah. what I do with my time. I just with all your time. With you, all my time, you I just do that. Work mm -hmm. on rosemary. Yes. So we're gonna chop this up. This is gonna go into our sauce that you might have called me out on. Let's talk about that. So during our commercial break, we felt like, Garth felt like, the sauce was to a little acidic. It had a lot of mustard going on. So we had originally added three tablespoons of butter. Garth went ahead and added about four more tablespoons of butter. Some people so, exaggerate. <laughs> so if your mustard sauce is a little too, you know, 
sour. Sour. Or you just want more deliciousness. Add more better. Which is another <laughs> new word for the day, right? Deliciousness. All right. Okay, so we're just going to put our fresh herbs in. I don't want to put those in until we're about five or ten minutes uh, out from ready to serve. So it needs to be to really last. Brown, okay. Right. And you've got this bubbling over here as well. And so now that's come up to heat, we just turn it off, mm -hmm. let it sit there ideally for an hour, but we could serve it in probably five or ten minutes. Okay. And speaking of five or ten minutes, this would be a great time to take the potatoes out. In the lovely casserole dish. <laughs> in the lovely <laughs> casserole dish. All One day we're going to have a full meal in this, just in this dish. <laughs> One day, mark my so words, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Freshly chopped garlic. I'm putting this in with about five minutes to go because I don't want to, I don't want to have the garlic start to get burned. And it's the same thing on the rosemary. Okay. So I'm add a little bit of rosemary. And again, this will be with about five minutes to go mm -hmm. because those two, if we put them in right as we started to cook the potatoes and you right. cook them for say 40 minutes, right. now you've got burnt rosemary, burnt garlic. Well, what about when you roast um, potatoes with rosemary? Like, haven't you ever done that? Yeah. Oil and rosemary? And, and they start to brown so much. That's why I like to add the rosemary at least, you know, half or three quarters of the way through. Okay, so it just um, keeps that rosemary fresh. But one option, if you want to do that, is just mm -hmm. put the entire sprig on there. You just put it right on top. And so now you'll be able to remove it, but it's going to add that, that essence, that flavor. I like that. To the potatoes. Uh -huh. And then at the end, you could put some freshly chopped. Because a cooked that's herb a tastes idea. different than a fresh herb. That's a really good so idea. If you want to do best of both worlds, that's how you can do it. Perfect. OK. So we'll put this in for about five. So you just toss them back in five minutes, just enough to get the garlic and the rosemary kind of blended well yeah. in with those potatoes. Yeah, that okay. marriage all those flavors together. Nice. And if you'll whisk that, the herbs in. Of course. And then the last thing we're going to do before we serve will be to toss arugula with okay. those hot potatoes. And the arugula that Ethan showed us, it's long leaf. So when you all go to the grocery store so many times, you're getting these tiny leaves. Right. This is, this is the big stuff. It's more peppery. So right. I, I love the taste of that. If you want it not quite as peppery, then just buy the little, the little miniature, the smaller the baby versions. Arugula the baby arugula would be okay arugula. as well. It would be. It's like, kind of like the baby bites sometimes, you know. I do. Well, yeah, decide what's what's best for the dish. And I think pepper goes well in this one. Okay, so this chicken's getting close, right? It is. Are we almost done with we this chicken? We're going to plate, plate it up, up soon. We okay, are. one more break, and then we're going to plate all this beautiful food together. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, we're back at my favorite place here at the Sub Zero Wolf showroom, and that is our prep kitchen where all the hard work happens. Today, we're going to be making a delicious lime and jalapeno shrimp. So, we're going to make a little quick sort of marinade sauce topping. It's all going to come together with about half of a bunch of cilantro. I'm going to be pureeing it, so I'm not too worried about a few stems here and there. About half a bunch of parsley. One jalapeno. If you like it spicy, leave the seeds in it. If you don't, just use the flesh and then three limes. We're gonna finish this off with a couple cloves of garlic and a little salt and pepper. Now we're gonna puree this either with a stick blender, food processor, regular blender. All right, if it's a little bit too thick, we'll add about a tablespoon of water. And now we're going to mix this in with our gulf shrimp that have been peeled and deveined. It's up to you if you want to leave the shrimp tail on or off. We're just going to toss that. This really packs a punch of flavor. I don't need to let it marinate because it's going to seal in all that flavor when we toss it on our griddle. Okay, while that shrimp is soaking in some of that delicious flavor, we're going to go ahead and get ready for our Latin style fried rice. If you want some nicely chopped small vegetables, buy that broccoli slaw from the grocery store, a little shortcut. We'll line that up, and now when I cut it across, it's gonna end up being very small pieces of vegetable. Got some broccoli, some carrot. Uh, a little shortcut here to get the vegetables in the rice. We'll just slide that cutting board off the edge of the counter. Slide those vegetables in. I'm gonna add a little bit of roasted cumin. So that's gonna add some smoky flavor and some roasted and salted pumpkin seeds to bring together all those Latin flavors. And now we're just gonna head over to the griddle and get dinner ready. Pull my shrimp out. Mm, smelling delicious from that garlic and lime and jalapeno. The shrimp are searing. I'm gonna to toss down my rice and vegetables and pumpkin seeds, a little bit of that cumin.
Now y'all can have fun with this, make little shapes. Leave a few around the edge as well. We'll garnish this all with a little bit of smoked paprika. Some little baby microgreens for the top. Looks pretty delicious, ready to eat in about, I don't know, five, maybe eight minutes, but a, a very simple, pretty healthy meal. Y'all enjoy. Time. time to finish it all up. <laughs> all right, so our potatoes are done now. They got the garlic cooked, that rosemary, rosemary. scented. Mm -hmm. Looking all casserole-y. <laughs> Casserole-ish. <laughs> really pretty. Our chicken, which was in there for about 10 to 12 minutes, mm -hmm. is now done. So let me ask you, you were like mashing on this. I was. And First of all, I think that's really hot. It seems like that would burn your hand. But secondly, oh. like, why are you pressing on that chicken like that? So I'm checking for the doneness to make sure it's fully cooked through. Mm -hmm. So a little tip I can give you guys that will apply to meat and yeah. to chicken is going to be, everybody make this symbol right here. Tell me how, how delicious this tastes. So your pointer fingers touch your thumb, but don't press it, just barely touch it. Now push right there. That's medium rare, okay? That's, that's the way steak should be done. Mm -hmm. Put your middle finger down, not up. Uh, put your middle finger down, that's medium. Uh -huh. Put your ring finger on your thumb, that's medium well. And then the only thing that should be your pinky on your thumb as well done is chicken, <laughs> not your steak. <laughs> that is why we don't cook steak here hardly at all anymore. So I like a well done steak, okay? Well, then you I'm can not have ashamed to say it. Beef jerky instead. <laughs> so I, I dunked this in the sauce. We're going to. All you did was just ro basically rotate it in that sauce. Right. I mean, if you. All that butter. <laughs> if you wanted to, you can drizzle a little bit around as well. Ooh, yeah. More butter, please. Okay. And then I'm going nice. to take I'm going to take this arugula, and mix that in. Toss that in those potatoes. Okay. That's going to cause them to uh, to cause it to wilt a little bit. Right. Because it's so hot. And ideally, you'd have you know a minute or two to let it sit there. Okay. Perfect. There you go. And it kind of wilts down. Kind of wilts down. Mm -hmm. Gets a little bit more potato on there. Yeah. And then this is our pickled red onion. Ooh, pretty. To go on the top. This looks beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm yeah, gonna, we're going to dig, dig in, in just, in just a second. second. But I want to tell everybody, just so you'll know, you can always download our recipes, Gar's recipes. I say ours. <laughs> ours too. And well, no, because you made the adjustment with the That's addition true. of the butter. <laughs> That's right. I got that. Uh, it's tastetexastv.com. Also, you can find us on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and that's Taste Texas as well. We appreciate you watching. As always, we thank you for joining us today. Y'all come back next week for another fantastic recipe. Thank you.